Okay, hello, these are the answers to uh, questions 2, 3, 4, and 7 from page 15. Starting with, um, describe the functions of the following organelles, mitochondria, nucleolus, and vacuole. So uh, mitochondrion is going to be this sort of kidney-shaped Organelle, it's got a membrane around it and then a membrane on the inside of it, so it's called a double membrane um, organelle or a plastid. And so uh, it generates ATP, which we talked about as being the energy molecule uh, used by cells from glucose. Oxygen. This is called cellular respiration. Specifically, this is aerobic cellular respiration because uh, it involves oxygen. Uh, another called, whether we're called anaerobic respiration, uh, doesn't require mitochondrion, doesn't require oxygen. Um, if you recall from the demonstration in class, that is. Uh, what basic organisms like bacteria can do by splitting glucose in two and just getting a couple of uh, ATP out of it, um, like four. Um, whereas if you have this souped up system with the mitochondrion, it allows you to break it down further into carbon dioxide uh, and get about 36 ATP. Uh, next one is the nucleolus. The nucleolus is uh, going to be uh, a darker section of the, of the nucleus which itself is a darker section, usually in the cell. Um, and that's where ribosomes are made. <clears throat> and now, uh, continuing from our lesson on the macromolecules, actually, it's the ribosomes that take the information in the nucleic acids and use it to build amino acids, sorry, to take amino acids and build them into proteins. So ribosomes are what get us from this stage, nucleic acids, into this stage, proteins. And a vacuole, vacuole is a storage place. Um, So I'm saying the word vesicles. Vesicles are small little membrane bags that are inside the cell. Um, so we saw that the cell membrane on the outside can have uh, smaller organelles and like this that have membranes around them. But also if they're just little bubbles on, on their own, um, they're generally called vesicles. And then if they're being used for breaking stuff down, they might have different names like lysosomes and other things. Uh, but if they're just using for use as places for holding stuff, then they're usually called vacuoles, and they're a little bit larger, uh, and especially large if they're in, um, in plants. So in plant cells, uh, we would have a large, a very large vacuole that's used to keep the the uh, cell upright uh, by pushing against, uh, adding um, pressure to push against the walls of the plant cell uh, and to, uh, against the plant cell wall basically to keep the plant upright. Um, that's why when you uh, run out of water, that means you're uh, in a plant, that means your vacuoles are getting, getting smaller and that's when a plant will shrivel over because there's not that pressure pushing on the side. Next. Number three, uh, we're examining this diagram. So if you don't see that diagram, there it is here. Okay. So
Does it show a plant cell or an animal cell? Well, that very large vacuole in the middle suggests that it's a plant cell. Uh, a few other things. Um, which lettered ones help you decide? Well, letter A is a chloroplast. Uh, letter B is the nucleus. Letter C is a mitochondrion. And letter D is the uh, cell wall. So if you see that cell, it's pointing to the outside, not the inside. That's the cell membrane is the little one on the inside, the clear one. But on the outside, that's the cell wall. Um, so, uh, the next question, well, the answer to question B would be uh, A, the chloroplasts, and D, the cell wall. Question C asks what those are called, that is what they're called. Chloroplast is where photosynthesis takes place. And so these two structures are found only in plant cells, so those would be the ones that would decide that it is a plant cell. Number four. Okay, so cell. cell membrane, cell wall. So they're both found on the outside of the cell. Cell membrane. made of phospholipids, which if you recall from here, phospholipids are in the lipid family, but they are one of these three lipid uh, fatty acid taily things, triglycerides, minus one tail, but with the addition of a phosphate group on the top, and that structure makes it um, dissolve in water on this side and not in the other side, and that allows that um, two-layered membrane to form. Uh, before I slide this over, I'm about to write that the cell wall is actually made out of uh, a kind of glucose chain called cellulose, which I'm not going to write here just right now, but um, it is made of a glucose with just a slightly different shape that's made into long chains, and it happens that humans can't digest that. Uh, cows and other things that can digest grass, ruminant animals can do that, but we can't. So cell membranes made of phospholipids, cell walls made of cellulose, carbohydrate, that's a lipid. They're both found on the outside of the cell. Cell wall and plants only. Cell membrane both plant and animal cells for this one. Um, you could also say that the cell wall is rigid and the cell membrane is flexible. Um, cell wall has openings in it to allow certain things to, to enter and leave. The cell membrane is going to be uh, uh, permeable, selectively permeable, so allowing some things in and not other things.
But those are a couple of points uh, to put down. Number seven. Uh, this little graph showing um, how many mitochondria. It's this little graph here. You don't have your book with you. Okay. So number of mitochondria in human body cells, and we see a skin cell has not very many. Muscle cells have a few more, and sperm cells have a lot. So which cell type do you think requires the most food in the form of glucose it receives for its functions? So since mitochondria use glucose to make ATP, then the ones that have the most mitochondria are also going to need the most glucose, most food. So the answer to A is sperm cell. Why do you think skin cells have the least number of mitochondria? the least number of mitochondria of the three types studied. Well, think about the functions of each of these kinds of cells. So the sperm cell needs to travel a long way. Um, it has a job to do. It has, to, has flagella to operate. Uh, so it's got to, it requires a lot of energy. Muscle cells. Muscle cells are contracting, um, doing work for the body, so they require a lot of energy. Skin cell. Well, skin cell just kind of sits being skin. So it doesn't require a lot of energy. So its function, which is internal protection of the body, uh, requires requires relatively little energy compared to those other two. Um, some things that you uh, that skin cells will need energy for, though, is uh, things like cell division, uh, which requires energy. And whenever a cell is damaged, whenever a skin cell is damaged, it needs to um, to initiate uh, cell division. So. Uh, I guess you could say mitochondria would be needed there to generate the energy required to do the cell division. That's it. <laughs>